Hey everyone, I'm Jason from Google's Identity Team. And I'm Marina from the Firebase Team. This is the second of a series of videos where we'll be diving into the world of authentication on Android using Firebase Authentication and Android's Credential Manager. In the first video of this series, we explained what Credential Manager and Firebase Authentication are and how you can combine them to allow users to sign into their Google accounts with just a tap. In this video, we're diving deeper into different authentication flows for signing with Google. Signing with Google is a service that allows users to sign up or sign into your app using their Google account. This means that users don't have to set up a new account by providing email, password, and other additional info to your app. They can simply use their existing Google account to sign in with a single tap. This makes the signing process much faster and more convenient. When you're implementing sign in with Google using Credential Manager, there are two different flows that you need to be aware of. The first one is implemented via Credential Manager's bottom sheet UI. This bottom sheet UI is meant to automatically show as soon as users navigate to the authentication screen in your app. It will then prompt users to sign in with their available options. In this specific video, we're only talking about sign in with Google, but you can also offer options like pass keys and username and password. Credential Manager's bottom sheet UI shows the right set of credentials that users need to sign in automatically removing that extra step of figuring out the right way to sign in. By enabling automatic prompts and offering multiple credential options, you're creating a frictionless and user-friendly sign-in experience. If no existing authorized accounts are available for the user, you can also use that same bottom sheet flow to show all available accounts so that the user can sign in for your app inline. Easy. To implement the bottom sheet UI, First, you have to instantiate a Google sign-in request using Get Google ID option, as you see here. Second, instantiate a credential request and add the Get Google ID option. Then pass this request to Get Credential to retrieve the user's available credentials. But what happens when the user dismisses the bottom sheet UI? How can you still provide the user with the option to sign in with Google? The answer is simple. Add a sign-in with Google button to your app's UI, as the one you see here. And just like that, a dialog box pops up. This dialog displays all the Google accounts associated with that device. So if your user has multiple Gmail accounts, they can easily select the one they want to use for your app. Alternatively, if they want to use an account that's not already on the device, all they have to do is click on Add Another Account. This takes them through a simple process to sign in with their desired Google account. To implement the Sign In with Google button, We'll instantiate a sign in with Google request using get sign in with Google option instead of get Google ID option. And all the rest remains the same. First, instantiate a credential request and add get sign in with Google option. Then, pass this request to get credential to retrieve the user's available credentials. Before we move on to cover what you can do with retrieved user credentials, Let's take a step back and talk about the different configurations you can use in the sign in with Google request. First, you can configure your request to only include Google accounts that have previously been used to sign into your app. You can do this by setting filter by authorized accounts to true in the first request. If no authorized Google accounts are available, you'll catch an exception of the type no credential exception. In that case, the user should be prompted to sign up with any of their available accounts. You can do this by calling the API again and setting filtered by authorized accounts to false. If you don't set any value in this field, it will default to true. You can also enable automatic sign-in for users who have previously signed in with a single account by setting auto select enable to true. When set, Users who have a single authorized account will be signed in automatically when filtered by authorized accounts is set to true. This removes unnecessary friction for users who have a single account that they use for your app. It's important to highlight that these two fields are only applicable in the bottom sheet flow. Now, let's take a look at the other two fields that can be applied to both the bottom sheet and the button flows. To improve sign-in security and avoid replay attacks, you should also include a nonce in each request. Using the nonce to verify each request is unique on the server prevents replayed requests that can use the same value. Last, make sure to use the set server client ID method to specify the web client ID of your app. 
With these configurations, you should have the tools to create a great signup and sign-in flow using Sign In with Google. A quick note about the server client ID. If you want to sign your user in with Firebase Authentication, we have sorted out the server-side client ID for you. This ID is injected into the app by the Google Services Gradle plugin, which you need to add to your Android app when you want to use Firebase services. All you have to do is reference the default web client ID string in the request. Once you've configured your request and retrieved the user's credentials, you'll need to check if this is of the type Type Google ID token credential. If this is true, you can use this ID token to sign the user into Firebase using the Firebase Authentication API. This will allow your users to take advantage of all the other services that Firebase offers, like Cloud Storage and Firestore. If you want to learn more about Firebase Authentication, other Firebase services, and Credential Manager, we've linked the documentation pages below. In the next video of this series, you'll learn how to implement authentication with Credential Manager and Firebase Auth. I'll show you how to use the credentials you retrieved with Credential Manager to sign the user into Firebase. We'll see you there.